Well, this is going to be the amazing history part two of Birkenhead. Ah. Ah. But before we get going, I'm just going to show you what it had, what it had. The central hotel, gone, in the gutter. Got the world's first public trains, well, from over the water, but it was all connected. The world's oldest deep level train station. And I'm just going to show you up this road, Clifford. Now just look at some of the architecture that's in this road. It never was finished as they ran into financial difficulties. Lord Hornblower, be turning in his grave if he saw Pub Review episode one. That first pint in Hornblower's. And he'd be turning in his grave if he saw this as well. Not this, this is pretty good. Really, really coincidental fact really interesting fact when they were building all of these fantastic houses they actually ran out of money and that coincided with the Masonic Rebellion from this building just behind me I'm not going to run all the way backwards but I do want to be quick because someone's got a key. Right. Are you going in? Yeah, yeah. Might get to the video just inside. Hop up with. Um, nice one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So inside this building was a rebellion against all the Freemasons across the country. Charles Dickens actually came and spent a night in here, I believe. Now obviously I've got access, permission. Pop in. Nice gates are open. But yeah, that, the collapse of Clifford Road happened around the same time as the collapse of Birkenhead in general, at the same time as the Masonic Rebellion. I talk about stellar work from the council. Right behind me, something majestic. Like, I don't even know if that's the council. It just reeks of council windows, the smaller than normal windows, the bricks, the they do just have a real flair these, I'm assuming it's council, just look at this, look at the shape of the bricks and everything, look at them, big fat things, you wouldn't catch any, catch any buildings in London or Amsterdam, Paris with bricks like that. That's a world council. I'm sure of it. Now we're back to our Gal Street. And this is a travesty as well. It's been absolutely butchered. if you can see that this is the old post office lovely building doing nothing now now I'm just walking past the site formerly known as Rockies 
It's another building that's been dismantled. I'll put a picture next to it and show you what it was like when it was um, popping. You had the theatre that attracted stars. I, I believe it was the second theatre in the UK but outside of London. Now, there's a lot of special buildings, but I only know one off the top of my head. And that's the Rathbone Studio. The old Civil War spy base for Abe Lincoln. Before we get ahead of ourselves at Market Street. Now, if you look at the architecture here, it's as nice as Chester. It's just to got the, the shop to... But then again, it's quite bad in Chester nowadays. All those buildings, all the corners were matched. And then you go and stick whatever a second front, is that what it is? So although it's closed right now, I actually went in and spoke to the lady who works there. She gave us a lot of information. I hope I haven't lost it, but it's going in this video at this point now it says britain's but it's actually europe's uh, i actually lost a lot of footage good stuff part three half part two um i talk about the trams how they roll straight out, right down the docks. All covered over now though. Now we're just walking around Hamilton Square. And here erected is a giant statue of John Boy himself. You can see he's holding the map of Birkenhead. That's because he, no one's done more for it. You could argue me when I get through all my videos, but right now he's he's head and shoulders above me. Now, when Hamilton Square was built, there was around 30,000 residents in Birkenhead. It was just a tiny, tiny place. You know, Oxton, less than a thousand bits than the same all little pockets of people and for some reason there is no blue plaque outside John Laird's house 63 this is where he lived smart man before alarm clocks bought his house near the town hall this is where he worked so Talk about a commute. The world's oldest deep level underground train links. You have trams everywhere. You have the biggest market in Europe. I think Mexico City is the biggest in the world. It's probably bigger than Birkenhead, in all fairness. It was designed by Gillespie Graham, uh, architect from Edinburgh. And when he found out that he couldn't finish it because he wanted to save a place for the town hall, he um, really saw his ass. And he said if he doesn't build four, he doesn't build any. So, one, two, three. And he got to build one in Oxton, Clawton. Oxton, Clawton. In between Oxton and Clawton. There's a row of houses just like that. He just built it there instead. The state of these flags. But that's nowhere near at all. You had port sunlight levers, sunlight soap, still going today, one of the biggest companies in the world. In Britain's Worst Slum, part two, I go past just a derelict, it must be derelict now, a derelict building. 
I googled the man's name and he had six patents, patents, like no one knows of him. I was walking down a bit further, you had the company that built India's rail, not doing much today. There was um, a big shipping company as well, I don't remember the name of it, I looked it up, went past, looked it up. Um, still going today but that's gone and then New Brighton the UK's number one holiday destination before all this kicked off